Flying an FPV drone is like riding a roller coaster in the sky, except you get to control where the roller coaster goes. FPV drones give you the speed and excitement of motorsport. They give you the fluidity of motion and expression of dance or gymnastics without any of the <laughs> athletic requirements. They give you the interaction with the environment of like a skateboarder doing tricks off of stairs and rails, except you're doing tricks up in the sky, off of buildings and through trees. FPV is an amazing hobby. And I'm so excited that you're watching this video because presumably you want to get into it. But there's a downside to FPV, and that is in this day and age, more and more governments are regulating FPV drones. In the United States, there are requirements for registering your FPV drone and putting a remote ID module on it that broadcasts your location wherever you are so anyone can find you. And, ugh, and that's putting a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. But what you may not know is that if your drone is less than 250 grams, then you don't have to do any of that stuff. But how much performance can you really get out of a sub 250 gram drone? It turns out quite a lot. This is the drone that you have been seeing fly in this video so far, and it weighs less than 250 grams and is exempt from those requirements that I told you about. And in this series of videos, you, are gonna build it. Why are you looking at me like that? Are you thinking, why would I build it? Can I not just buy it? Can I just buy it pre-assembled, get it and go fly it? And the short answer is maybe. Uh, in the past, Lumineer has sold pre-assembled versions of my build kits, but that's not the point. The point is that if you fly an FPV drone, you're going to do awesome stuff with it. And when you do awesome stuff with it, eventually you're going to crash it. And when you crash it, most of the time, it'll just pop back up again. These things are surprisingly durable, but eventually you will break it. And when you break it, you're going to need to know how to fix it because it's not like there's the FPV drone store that you just take it into the mechanic and pay your money and get it fixed again. And even if you did, you'd pay a lot of money getting it fixed because you're going to fly it hard. You're going to crash it and you're going to break it more than you'd like to pay to fix it. You need to know how to fix it. And that's hard because these things are complicated and learning to fix them is challenging. And I think the single best way to learn to fix an FPV drone is to have built it yourself. And that's what this series is about. In my previous five inch, greater than 250 gram build series, I've taught thousands of people over the course of several years how to build and maintain and fly a five inch FPV drone. And in this series, I'm gonna do the same thing for you with this sub 250 gram three inch FPV drone. And we're gonna start right now by going over the parts that come in the kit and introducing you to the parts of an FPV drone. Now, I will say, if you've already purchased the kit and you're looking to get started on the build, then you can go to the playlist linked in the video description below. All of the videos in this build series are in a playlist and you're just gonna work your way through from start to finish. And at the end, you'll have a drone that you can fly, wee, and you'll go out and you'll have a good time. If you're ready to go do that right now, then playlist in the video description below. Otherwise, stick with me. We'll go over the parts that come in this. We'll talk about some, some parts that don't come in that you're gonna need to get anyway. And we'll just sort of talk about the parts of a quadcopter, which you may not know. And the first part is the frame, and that is these carbon fiber pieces that sort of hold everything together. The frame for this quadcopter is the Lumineer QAVS2 Joshua Bardwell Edition 3-inch frame. This is a brand new 3-inch frame that was designed just for this project. And, uh, I mean, it's a 3-inch quadcopter frame. We designed it pr to be a little more on the durable side than the lightweight side, which in a sub-250 gram means a few other compromises had to be made, but we really wanted a frame that wasn't going to just fall apart on you if you crashed it a lot. So we've got 3.5 millimeter carbon fiber here on the plate that's holding the motors and 1.5 millimeter carbon plate for the other ones, and we think that's the right balance between durability and lightweight. We've also got this metal front end, which improves durability and simplifies camera mounting, which again, added a little bit of weight, but we thought it was worth it. I am particularly proud of this frame. I, 
I didn't design this frame. I just sat there and made annoying comments while the actual designers designed the frame. But I'm particularly proud of the way that the motors mount on this frame. The motors mount to this plate here. Um, and then the rest of the bottom plate is in the front and back. And this addresses a problem that comes up when you design a small quadcopter frame. The lightest weight and the most simplicity is if you just cut the whole bottom plate out of a single piece of carbon fiber sheet. But the problem is that when it breaks, you have to replace the entire carbon fiber sheet, which basically means you have to strip down the whole quadcopter, take all the electronics off, and basically rebuild the whole thing from scratch. Uh, on the other hand, you can have individual arms that slot in and then if you break an arm, you only replace that one arm. But especially on small quadcopters, this adds weight and reduces durability and just adds complexity. For a bigger quadcopter, it's fine, but for the small ones, it doesn't work that well. And we think this really splits the difference very well. All the motors are on a single plate, so we have good resonance characteristics. If one does break, you do have to replace this whole plate, but these two plates come off and the camera and the flight controller and all the electronics are attached to these plates. So when you replace this, you don't have to take the entire quadcopter apart. Uh, anyway, we think it's pretty clever. The motors are Xylo Stealth 1404 in size in 4,500 kV. Um, the 1404 size, that refers to the diameter and height of the motor stator, uh, and a deep discussion of motor sizing is way outside the scope of this conversation, but there are gonna be some people who say that a three inch drone flies better on like 15 millimeter or 16 millimeter motors, larger motors. And that is true, but that would put us over 250 grams and that's what we had to do to get under 250 grams. There are gonna be those who say that this would be better if it was a three and a half inch drone instead of a three inch drone. And in some ways they would be right, but again, that would put us over 250 grams. It is possible we could, and maybe we will, release a new plate that is a three and a half inch sized plate and then you can screw the 250 gram limit and you can put whatever motors on there that you want if you feel like doing that. This board here on the bottom is the flight controller. And the flight controller is essentially the brains of the quadcopter. It takes inputs from your controls that you're, you're, well, you're telling the quadcopter what to do. It has sensors on it like a gyroscope and an accelerometer that tell it how the drone is moving in space. And it does a whole bunch of calculations and decides how to make the motor spin to make the drone do what it needs to do. So the flight controller might say, oh, we need to pitch forward. So the back motors need to speed up and the front motors need to slow down and that makes us pitch forward. We need to descend. So all the motors need to slow down and so on and so on. The flight controller is the brains of the quadcopter. The flight controller that we're using in this build is the Luminaire Lux HD AIO G4 flight controller. That's a lot of letters and numbers that don't mean anything to you. It's a flight controller made by Luminaire, a company. And one thing that stands out about this flight controller is that it's what's called an all-in-one flight controller. Uh, it really is two things in one, the flight controller and another component called the electronic speed controller or ESC. The short version is that in order for the motors to spin, something has to pump electricity through them and it has to pump electricity through them in such a way that it makes them go faster and slower as commanded by the flight controller and that is the ESC's job. Nobody says electronic speed controller. We just say ESC all the time. So the flight controller decides what the motors should be doing. The flight controller tells the ESC, make the motors go faster or slower. And the ESC makes the motors go faster or slower. On these very small builds, like the three inch sub 250 gram, it's common to combine the flight controller and the ESC together into one component. And that is an all-in-one flight controller. It's really just two things in one, but they call it an all-in-one. So it's an FPV drone, which means there's a camera on the drone, and then that goes to a video transmitter, which transmits the video out an antenna on the drone to the goggles on your face, and then you see what the drone is doing. That video system could be one of several types. There are four video systems that are commonly used in FPV. There's analog video, there's DJI, there's a company called WalkSnail, and there's another company called HD Zero. Those are the four main video systems used in FPV. And what you need to know is that you're basically gonna pick one of those systems and then sort of slot yourself into that architecture. Like 
if you buy an Android phone versus an iPhone and the accessories aren't compatible and they kind of don't talk to each other very much. It's not a perfect analogy. You're going to slot yourself into one of those systems and you're going to buy one of those video systems. Now, if you already have one of those systems, then that's, that's it. You're going to buy that one. But if you're on the fence and you haven't decided yet because this is your first build, this is not going to be the video where I tell you which one to get. It's a complicated decision and I'll try to find some resources for you and put links in the video description below, or you can just start doing searches for best FPV video system. Um, what you need to know is that if you buy the analog version of this kit, we are going to include for you an analog video transmitter, an analog camera, and an antenna for your analog video system. And the reason for that is analog systems are not proprietary. Uh, when you get a DJI system or a walk snail system, only DJI or walk snail makes that, and there's basically only one of those. But analog systems have been around forever. It's literally the same technology that was used to transmit television signals through the air in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and all the way up to the high-definition digital uh, changeover whenever that happened. So that technology, GetFPV can manufacture a very inexpensive, capable system and just get it for you and throw it in there. But if you go with a digital system like Walksnail or DJI, what you're going to do is buy the HD Ready kit, which will come without a video transmitter, and buy the video transmitter and the camera separately. And all of this stuff is on the product page but you're going to need to know that it's going to be a separate item that you put in your cart. It's not going to come with the kit. That also explains the pricing of the kit. You may notice that the HD Ready kit is surprisingly inexpensive compared to the analog kit. That's because the HD Ready kit doesn't include the video transmitter and the camera. The other thing you're going to need to buy is a receiver. Um, here's, here's a little receiver uh, outside of the packaging. And the receiver is the thing on the drone that connects to your hand controller. We've got these antennas here, and they're transmitting whatever I'm doing with the sticks, and that's going to go to the receiver on the drone, and it's going to then tell the flight controller what you want the drone to do. We can see here on my built drone, here is the receiver, and right here is the receiver antenna. And the reason that's not included with the kit is that everybody has different uh, receiver technologies, different control link technologies, and they're not all compatible with it with each other. And so if you have a spectrum controller or a free sky controller or a crossfire controller or a ghost controller, if you have some existing control link technology, then you don't want to have to buy a whole new hand controller just to build this kit. You're going to want to use what you've already got. So we don't include the receiver in the kit, but if you're going to follow along with this build, and use the same receiver that I'm using, and I recommend that you do, unless you're already invested in another system, then you're gonna get a ExpressLRS receiver. ExpressLRS is the name for the family of hardware that I use, and what we're gonna be using in here. The specific receiver that you get could be any ExpressLRS receiver, but I'm gonna recommend that you get the Happy Model EP1, or the RadioMaster RP1, or something similar to that. And again, if you go to the product page, there will be links there for the receiver, but don't just scroll past them and go, oh yeah, I don't need that. You need to buy a receiver, and you need to buy a controller if you don't already have one. I'll be using the RadioMaster GX12. Uh, you could use any of the RadioMaster Express LRS radios. The RadioMaster Pocket is extremely uh, inexpensive and very capable. Some people prefer the RadioMaster Boxer. There are various ones you can get, but you will need a hand controller, and you will need need a receiver. Now, there's one exception to that, and that is if you're using the DJI video system, you could choose to use the DJI RC Controller 3. And in that case, the DJI system would be your receiver, and it would bind to this uh, hand controller. Um, you can do that if you want to, if you happen to already own this, but I do not recommend that you buy the RC Controller 3 just for that purpose. I really recommend you use an Express LRS receiver and a separate hand controller. Uh, it's going to give you a better experience, in my opinion. If you happen to already own this and you just want the convenience of not having to buy a separate receiver and save the money, you can use this. And I will have instructions for setting this up in the tutorial. So now you're familiar with the major components of the drone. And the only thing left to do is to start tearing this apart and putting it together. And we're going to do that in the next video in the playlist. There's a link to the full playlist for this build series down in the video description below as well. I'll put a card on screen where you can click on that and go to that playlist and just start working your way through the videos. And I'll see you there.